Hey, welcome to the Alan Parks Project. I'm Alan Parks and so is he. Today we're going to be taking a look at this tuba. It is the King 2341 double B flat tuba. And it's a doozy. Take it away, Alan. Thanks, Alan. So this is a pretty good example of a middle of the road quality double B flat tuba. It retails for around $9,000 depending on where you get it, which, you know, that's still pretty spendy, especially compared to some of the more modern Chinese tubas that you can get from Wessex or Mac Brass or some of these other places. But it's a pretty solid bet. It's got a nice big bell. It's got a fairly compact body and you know, it's heavier than the horn I'm used to, which is this. But I like this horn a lot. Like I said, it's got a big bell, really big throat on it. So it really projects well. It's got a lot of nice low end and sounds really full and rich. I've been playing it with a, what is this? This is a, oh, this is a Miraphone C4, which I believe is a lot like a Helberg mouthpiece. Um, of the mouthpieces I have, that's the one I found that really sounds best with it. I'm not into mouthpieces and mouthpiece sizes and numbers and all that, so I have no idea if this really is like a Helberg, but I like the way it sounds with this instrument. It comes with a mouthpiece, but this particular instrument doesn't have it, so I got to use what I've got. But that's nice. It's good. It sounds good. So once again, a lot of good solid projection to it. You can get a good roaring tone. You can get a nice lyrical sound. And I imagine it would work really well with a community band or even orchestral work if that's where, uh, you know, where you're so inclined to go. Let's take a closer look at it and get into some of the fine details. If you're interested in specs, which to be honest, I'm not really the person. I don't care what the bore is. I don't care how big the bell is. But if you are interested in specs, here's all of the specs on it if you really want to take a look at that. So here you go. Here's a little bit of a closer look. Once again, four front mounted valves, plenty of tuning slides to go around. Here's your first valve tuning slide, easily reached over the top bow of the bell for putting certain notes in tune. And here's your third valve slide. You got your second is here, so you can get in there and get that, but it's not normally something you really need to mess with much. So the first valve, has two tuning slides. It also has one here, and one here and here, and as does the third. This is the other third valve tuning slide. Here's your fourth valve tuning slide with a water key, which is pretty nice. Here's your main tuning slide, which is pretty nice. And then there's another tuning key, uh, water key back down underneath here, and that's attached to the fourth valve as well. Some complaints have been about this horn is that it catches um, condensation in certain spots and you'd have to do the big spinny flippy thing to uh, get it out, but I haven't experienced that. It doesn't seem to be a problem with for me at all. Let's, talk, let's kick it over to the other side and have a look at the back. Not much to see there, especially. Just, there's the valve caps. You can see how big the throat is on this thing. It's a pretty hefty horn. It has a couple of strap hangers in spots that I wouldn't put strap hangers. They're usually not in good spots, but you know, I haven't tried to put a strap on it yet anyway, so what the heck. Doesn't really matter. This is not a horn for carrying around and playing, especially. And then there's the case. So if you order it as a King 2341W, it comes with a case. As you can see, it's an ABS molded plastic case. It's got four, uh, ah, where is it? There it is. Four buckles, acts just like any other tuba case on earth. It's big, it's awkward, it's heavy, it's uncomfortable it'll keep your tuba from getting mulched up. So it's just space for the horn. Yep, there's a compartment with stuff in it. There it is. Not much to report, just a case. So how well does this horn move? I'll tell you how well this horn moves. This horn moves just fine. Big horn, you can push it along. It doesn't slow you down. Not as much as my technique slows me down anyway. Well, as much as I like this instrument, I would be remiss if I didn't address some of its flaws. The fellow who maintains this instrument, he's reported that the valves were lapped fairly badly and they needed to be relapped. That the springs in the valves are kind of loose and janky and make a bit of noise. I didn't notice any of that, but he certainly did. 
and that the hex head screws that hold on the lead pipe and hold on other parts of it, no, nope, hello, hold on other parts of the instrument, they can loosen up. So you have to watch out for that. He also reports that the bell dents easily and thinks the gauge of brass is kind of thin. I think it's just a big bell. They're a little more susceptible to denting. So you have to watch out for that sort of thing. Okay, let's talk about how it handles high and low notes. How does it play over all the whole range of the horn? Middle of the horn? Plays great. Fine, no problem. No problem. Let's try the low range. These things can tend to get stuffy once you start bringing the fourth valve into play down, say, a low F. So let's take it down as far as it goes and see what we get, okay? So let's, uh... Okay, there's F. flat okay so you can get there it is a little bit stuffy but most horns pretty much are not really a problem and you don't usually move very quickly down in that range anyway so so let's go up high okay okay so there's an F my range I can I can squeak out a note an octave above that F the F above the staff can't really play anything up there, but I can hit the note. If you're going to play up there, you're probably playing an F tuba or an E flat tuba anyway. So let's try and see if we can get this big horn all the way up to that F. There it is. Okay, the horn will do it. I'm not so good at it, but it hits that about as solidly as my small Miraphone does. So Range-wise, this has got it going on. I don't see any problems with it. I have played some horns that don't want to go very high, and I've played some horns that don't really care to go very low. This one seems to do all of those, so thumbs up in that department. So there you go. That's the King 2341. Uh, this one's a W because it came with a case. Um, what do I think overall? I think it's a pretty nice horn. It's a pretty good horn. It's a pretty decent school horn. The intonation problems uh, make me a little leery, but I do like the instrument quite a lot. So uh, if you're inclined to get one, I think you could get one with a lot of confidence. I wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't be sad if I owned one. So uh, yeah, pretty good horn. Go ahead and get yourself one. Get two, why not? Thank <laughs> you.